Hello, welcome back to InFlight Music. My name is Ian, and today we're going to be going over the newest plugin from ImageLine called Flex. So right now, Flex is in beta mode, and you'll get this whenever you install the FL Studio 20.1.2 beta. And it says here that Flex is a free synthesizer that is going to be included with Fruity Edition and up. So basically, anyone that owns FL Studio will actually have Flex as a new stock plugin. It then goes on to say here that Flex includes subtractive wavetable multi-sample FM and AM based synthesis and it has free content which will be expanded including these preset packs right here. You'll notice that some of these preset packs have a little download symbol so you'll have to just download those. It only takes a minute or two to download the other preset packs. There should be four of them that you'll be able to download right from the get-go. But altogether, when you click this all section right here, you'll end up with 458 different presets to start out with, which is quite a bit. So you could actually go to these tags and you can sort these in any style that you like by type and style. So for example, let's find a dark lead real quick. And we have three of them to start out with. One of them I've already highlighted as one of my favorites. You'll be able to access your favorites right here. I still have these tags of dark lead, so it's filtering out that haunting hour preset. But let's just go ahead and listen to this haunting hour preset. I'd say that's a pretty good name for it, for sure. But yeah, the first thing that I noticed right off the bat, um, this isn't a full-fledged synthesizer. So basically, a lot of people are comparing this to something like Nexus, where you have a bunch of ROMs or presets, patches, whatever you want to call them, and then you just have some parameters that you could edit. So right here, this first section are the macros, and basically, each preset's going to have a different set of macros that are tailored towards what affects that preset the most. So for example, with this preset, it has filter, vibrato, unison, harmonic, reverb, and delay. So let's just listen to what this does to the preset that we have selected. One other thing that you'll notice is this little lock symbol. This is actually one of the features that I like most about this Flex plugin. You can actually find this on plugins like Nexus, like a Silent One, where you can lock different features or settings within each preset. And then when you move on to the next preset, you'll still have those same exact settings. But like I said, for macros, each preset's going to have different macros. So if we move on to this Journey preset, we now have control over the cutoff resonance, distortion, and peak. So I personally wouldn't use this lock feature with macros, but I would be using it for things like envelopes. So with this Haunting Hour preset, it has more of a softer attack, which makes it like a pad. Let's give it a harder attack so that we hear the sound come in right away. Now when we move on to any other preset, you'll actually be able to play anything that sounds like a pad initially and make it sound more like keys or a harder lead. Let's extend this attack and turn these all into pads. So that's something that I used to do with uh, my hardware workstations. So I used to own a Phantom X. A lot of the times as I'm browsing through my presets, if I knew that I was looking for a pad sound, I would just change this volume envelope and make everything have the shape of a pad. And another thing that I would lock it are the filters. So if I knew that I already had a lot of lower frequencies or a lot of mid frequencies, I would go ahead and lock the filter to turn all the presets into higher frequency sounding presets. So with this filter, when you move the cutoff to the left, you're getting a low pass. If you move it to the right, you're getting a high pass.
and your envelope amount is actually affected by these envelope settings right here. The filter will actually be in the shape of however you shape this envelope. So those are the type of things that I would typically be locking down as I'm browsing through these presets if I already know exactly what values I want for each of these settings. Same thing with the master filter, the delay, and reverb. If you know that you want a more ambient type of sound, go ahead and lock in your reverb, throw that mix up, and increase the size, and now all these presets will have this reverb locked in. And then let's go ahead and mess with this limiter because this limiter is more than just a limiter. It actually has different saturation and distortion algorithms. Let's go ahead and turn off these effects. Let's turn the mix all the way up and then use the pre knob to drive the signal into this effect. Sounds pretty good. Let's check out heating. Has a warmer, more saturated sound for sure. Let's go to distortion. And that one's just mean. I'm sure some of you are interested in what the piano sound like. Piano pad. A Rhodes MK1. Not bad. So yeah, their use of sampling is pretty good for sure. Uh, these essential strings. You could easily see hands down that out of all the stock instruments that come with Fruity Edition, the most basic version of FL Studio, this definitely has the best sounds that you could possibly get with stock FL Studio. So really, I think that this is geared towards people that aren't as fluent in sound design and they're just looking for quality sounds to start out with and then just have the ability to manipulate those sounds little by little to kind of make them their own so that they could fit those into their style of production. This isn't a full-fledged synthesizer by any means, but it definitely gets the job done in terms of just finding the exact sound that you're looking for by type and style, and then going in and just editing the macros, which are basically mapped to the parameters that change the sound the most. So I think this is a weapon in FL Studio that's really gonna help a lot of beginners 
so that they're not really worried about finding high quality sounds that actually sound professional. These are sounds that would take you a lot longer to sound design yourself or sample yourself compared to just clicking a few presets that actually sound really good. And to be honest with you, compared to something like Nexus, I would say by the time they're done adding in packs, you're not gonna have to worry about spending thousands of dollars on something like a Nexus. I think these sounds are a lot more modern. They're more tailored to the style of sound design of today. I think the sampling is legit. And my guess is that they're actually using Harmor to make a lot of these presets and layering those with something like their direct wave with their uh, multi samples. But that's not confirmed, nor that does it need to be. All you have to do is just use your ears and you can hear that these are much better sounds than say, for example, the presets in Citrus, which is an FM based synthesizer. So you're actually getting a lot more style of synthesis through this plugin than you would with a Citrus. And that's not to talk bad about Citrus. Citrus, you could definitely make some high quality sounds with Citrus if you know what you're doing. But if you don't, or if you just want to save time, you're probably better off just going through these tags and finding the style and the type and then filtering down your hundreds of presets and then going from there. I'm not sure when this is going to be released officially for all of the versions of FL Studio, but when it does, I'll do another demo of this where I actually make an entire song just using the presets that are included in Flex. I think that'll be very beneficial for you guys. But until then, definitely download the demo even if you don't own FL Studio yet, I'm pretty sure you can still download the beta and try that out. There's about a month left in that public beta. Hopefully that will encourage you to at least get the fruity version of FL Studio. It's only like 99 bucks. So with all the basic features of FL Studio, plus including a plugin like this that actually has really high quality sounds, I would say this plugin alone is probably worth 100 bucks. So I think they're really trying to push people towards actually getting started with just owning the basic version of, F of FL Studio and still being able to create high quality tracks that actually compete with what's out there right now. If you have any questions, definitely comment down below and like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.